Definitely it's a personal lot because uh, I have family over there, brothers, sister, nephews, niece, uh, and a lot of friends. And uh, also because uh, it's my origin, where I came from. And as a human being, it's really hard to forget whatever who you are, from where did you come from. My parents are immigrants here. My father has uh, worked his way up the ladder, you can say, um, coming from a very um, unprivileged family, I guess you can say. So they were a very, very um, poor family, you know. So they had to, you know, the, the children of that generation, my father's generation, my father's siblings, they had to, you know, work their way up to that, um, to, get, to get themselves out of that situation. And then and my father did. I mean, now he owns a restaurant across the capital and, you know, very successful. And, you know, my mother being there the whole way, you know, and raising three boys in a society inside a society, if that makes sense. So the uprising in Syria, it, it affects me directly in the sense that, you know, I have given, I've been, I've been, I've had, I have this favor that I owe. I owe a big favor to my family and this favor uh, to God, really, in a sense that, you know, I've been put in a situation where people that if I was born and raised in Syria, I would never have had, and I could have easily had it. I could have easily been one of the, monk, one of the monks that people dead in Syria, easily. You know, uh, I'm just, I don't want to say privileged, but I was just, fate had, had allowed me to be born and raised here. And that fate, I don't want to take advantage of. I want to cherish it, I want to be grateful for it. You know, and this country has taught me that. You know, the way I was raised taught me that. You know, that this is a privilege, this is not a right. So I feel like, it, for me directly, I need to be able to speak my mind and tell people this is not right what's happening in Syria. People should be able to speak their mind. You know, civil liberties are okay, you know. It's not, you know, you can, ha you can be in power, sure, but just allow us to speak our mind. You know, allow us to say what we want, you know. For me, I have to remind myself that I have an origin. I have uh, a background of some sort, and I need to make sure that that background stays there. You know, it stays there, and I need to make sure that, that I don't take advantage of it, you know, not be ungrateful for it. The international community isn't doing much about it, you know, so it's the people that need to do something about it, just like people did in Tunisia, just like people did in, in Egypt. You know, people have to be able to say something. When something is wrong, it's known, and people need to come up and talk about it. If people who are elected aren't doing enough about it, then the people need to do something about it. The problem now was happening in the Middle East with particular with Syria. There's this I, there's this relationship happening between three countries, really. And one of them isn't really a country, one of them is an organization. And that meaning Hezbollah, which is the southern part of Lebanon, Syrian government, and uh, the Iranian government. Now, if Syria goes down, which they should, the regime, the Syrian regime, as Bashar's regime, if it falls, which it needs to fall, which is going to fall. But when it does, that relationship between Iran geographically and Hezbollah is going to be disconnected. You can't speak big mouth anymore. You know, it's easy to talk, you know, trash to a country that's right, you know, right next to you, like for example Israel. But when that friend of yours that's helping you be the, the network, the key to be able to do that, be able to talk that smack, when that guy is gone, you can't talk anymore. Because that secretive, you know, going through Syrian, you know, country to be able to supply Hezbollah, however financially, weapon-wise, that is not going to be there anymore. So for Iran, it's critical, critical, that they have that, that relationship for Syria. I think I have to watch the news. Uh, as far as I have time, I have to watch it and follow it up and to hear good news about that regime to be collapsed and to, and to, you know, and for my uh, people, uh, brave people, just to get him down as soon as possible. I am waiting for that news, the same as, as I did with the other regimes in Tunisia, in Egypt, in Libya, and uh, also in Yemen. And now, I think soon, soon our brave people over there, the one who is looking for freedom and democracy, just to, uh, just to get him down soon, because it's enough, enough, it's 40 years for him and his dad.